Hey everybody, it's Daniel here from InfraRest. Hope you're all doing well. So, in my last video, I talked about the Federal Reserve, the FOMC minutes, and a couple of key points there when it comes to interest rates, monetary policy, etc., etc. You can check out that video. I did it not too long ago, just two days back. It's called FOMC Minutes Summary. So just check out that video. But today, we're going to talk about Macklem, the head of the Bank of Canada, what he had to say. And he spoke and he said a couple of things that was pretty interesting for uh, you guys to note. So... I'm going to just read a couple of points, some summary here as well, um, summarizing Bank of Canada's Macklem, the key points that he says and what he sees when it comes to interest rates, inflation, and uh, their monetary policy as well. So first things first, let's start off with him saying, Canada interest rates may now be restrictive enough. So very interesting. He's basically signaling here that they're done. They're done with the rate hikes, right? Of course, 100% things can change. These guys, you know, central bankers have told us in the past, two years back, do you remember? Inflation is transitory. That means that don't worry, it's going to come down. And what happened after that period in 2022, right? After being wrong, they said, hey, sorry, we're wrong. Inflation is actually not transitory. We have to do much more. Thus caused the massive, massive rate hikes in 2022, right? So basically, he came, you know, back on game out, says that, you know, we're now in restrictive territory. And that basically says it's a signal that, you know, they are in pause mode. Now, I also mentioned excess demand that made it too easy to raise prices is now gone. So whatever demand that was there, and like I mentioned many, many times before that, you know, when you get all these rate hikes start to kick in and start to affect the economy, the demand, especially the excess component of it, it's starting to really diminish and it's making it harder Um uh, you know, harder for prices to move up. So back then when there was excess demand, right, uh, that made it easy for prices to increase, you're starting to see that basically gone now, right? Which is a sign that, you know, when you look at the supply and demand curve of things, you know, the demand side is softening. Like I've mentioned before in my videos that, you know, this is one of the side effects of higher rates is you're going to affect the demand side, which is going to eventually affect prices. That's the whole point of all these rate hikes that were that were done is to basically fight the demand side in order to bring and alleviate the prices and bring inflation lower. Now, he also mentions reiterates that if high inflation persists, the Bank of Canada is prepared to raise its policy rate further. So, like I said, if all of a sudden oil prices start skyrocketing, we see $150 per barrel in oil prices, things start, you know, soft landing happens, and economy is fine, things pick up, more jobs, more stimulus, more pumping of money out of nowhere. Then, yeah, if things pick up, don't be, you know, you know, um, shocked that they go to hiking rates but how things are going right now with how things are going right now i've seen it that there's a very low chance of that happening and it's in fact that i think that it's very likely we are going to continue to be in pause mode and when the pause happens and we are in a pause for a couple you know of weeks or month or so we tend to be in pause for about um you know six months to a year so how it works is you know if you look at the whole cycle when it comes to monetary policy they hike they slow down they hike they slow down they hike they pause they hike and then they pause and pause and pause and pause the real pause and then what happens after that the easing cycle all right start to ease pause a bit what does that ease means cutting rates Start to cut rates. Pause. See, yes, that's the situation. Okay, more rate cuts needed. Okay, cut more. Pause. Uh, more is needed. Okay, cut a little bit. Pause. 
Uh, okay, shit's hitting the fan. Things are getting worse off. Unemployment rates going crazy. You know, markets tanking. All right, now we're gonna do emergency rate cuts. Cut, 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 cut uh, until you stimulate the economy or, or you help it in some way. Right. So the cycle. It's just all cycles. It's you know, it's it's not that difficult if you just look at history. That's how a cycle generally happens, and that's how you know central banks out there conduct their monetary policy, and that's generally the trend of interest rates um, when they you know do this whole cycle there. So. Um, the fact that he mentioned that, you know, um, they're in restrictive, t you know, res they're now restrictive, basically mentions a pause and what comes after a pause is basically rate cuts, right? Uh, now, let's, another point that he mentions is that the Canadian economy is approaching balance. We expect it to remain weak for the next few quarters, okay? We're in pause mode for some reason, okay? We don't, we're not, remember one thing, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes a little bit frustrating for me to explain this, but it's okay. I mean, I'm happy to, to go out and explain it over and over again, but you don't hike rates if things are bad. You don't do that. You do, you hike rates if things, the economy's doing well, okay? Vice versa. You don't pause because, you know, you you think that economy is fine, right? You pause because you're like, okay, you know, we're starting to see weakness. And as we have seen in history with previous cycles, nine out of ten times, when we aggressively hike and we go too far, generally, we see things crash, Right? Thus, the pause. There was one scenario, 1995, where there was a soft landing. Could we see this in this example? Maybe, maybe not, right? You let me know what you guys think. But I stand on, on the side that probably not. But the fact that he mentioned that, okay, we're, prob we're, we're approaching balance. We expect the economy to remain weak for the next few quarters, which means more downward pressure on inflation. Again, if the economy is going to continue to be weak for a couple of quarters, and they see that you know that's coming down the pipeline soon, that should also affect the inflation side of things, which means that there's less need for rate hikes. Because now the weakness in the demand is starting to creep up into uh, the jobs into the unemployment rate, the continu continuing jobless claims. I'm talking about more of the U.S. and and also um, inflation, right, for both U.S. and Canada. Um, now going back to Canada, deviated a little bit there. Um, basically says inflation in Canada is still too high and progress cutting. It is slower than uh, we had hoped. So even though they're pausing, inflation's still too high, and uh, progress cutting it is slower than we expected. We expected that inflation would cut sooner than, than anticipated. And guess what? A lot of people expected the recession to happen already, the crash to happen already. A lot of people expected that. Didn't happen. Right? Look at this year, 2023, complete reversal, right? Markets were tanking, stock market was tanking, 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 tanking. What you get in 2023, the reverse, buy, 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 buy. Not all the stocks were up. I'm talking mostly uh, the Magnificent Seven, the big fangs, the big tech stocks, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Tesla, uh, NVIDIA, right? You name it majority of these stocks were the reasons why you saw NASDAQ and S&P 500 move up uh, 50, 60, 70, 75% of the move, right? If you look at it, NASDAQ 100 is about 5% away from all-time highs, back to almost where we started when the markets were plunging in 2022. So very interesting there. Um, expectations for near-term inflation have been slow to come down, and this is a concern, so they still want inflation to come down. 
It's still not at where they want it to be. Long-term inflation and to have remained um, well anchored. All right. So biggest takeaway here from Bank of Canada is that, you know, they're in pause mode. And they're in pause mode. They're not looking to very unlikely that they're going to, you know, hike further unless it's really needed. But they're looking to assess the situation and wait for more weakness from the demand side, which brings in 2024, the year where we could start to see weak jobs, weak growth, weak data. And if not... Then they got to do something about it. Then they got to go and hike or do something about it. Another thing I do want to mention is um, other comments that Macklem said is that the CPI number was certainly encouraging. Good news for Canadian citizens. Right now is not the time to be thinking about cutting rates though. However, very important line I want to stress. We do not have to wait until inflation is back to 2% before we cut interest rates. But we do need to wait until it's clear that we are on the path to hitting 2%. Okay, did you hear that? I'm going to say it again. We do not have to wait until inflation is back to the 2% before we cut interest rates. Okay, so you don't have to, so, so first of all, your, your target was to hit 2%, but you're saying we don't have to wait till 2%. We could start cutting rates, which means what, right? If you think about it, which means are they expecting, planning, most importantly, expecting a credit event, a hard landing to come soon? Because the only reason you would be cutting interest rates, right? especially in the beginning, is because you want to start an easing cycle because you do expect that what is to come is going to damage the economy significantly. It's going to damage the demand side, which is definitely if, let's say, inflation is on the way to 2%, let's say 2.5, 2.4, 2.3, right? On that way, you probably expect that the demand side, the weakness in demand is going to bring it further down, right? And if you're going to cut rates, especially aggressively, it's because you expect that the number will also go below 2%, which would mean that tremendous weakness in the economy, right? And that's where the other part of the line where it says to continue on with that um, that that sentence is, but we do not need to wait until it's clear that we are on the path to hitting 2%. Okay? We do not need to wait until it's clear, until it's clear that we are on the path of 2%. So what is it that, what is it that's going to make you seem that it is clear? Because we're not far from 2%. You could argue that, okay, we're around the three plus percent, so start cutting rates now, right? Isn't that enough to tell you that, hey, let's bring rates down um, because we're on the path? Because we are on the path. We did come from the highs. We are reaching to 2%. Shouldn't that be enough? But no, they're not cutting rates. So what does that mean on the path? It's clear. It's visible. That means that there is tremendous pain that is coming and that means that there is a demand side that's being crushed from these credit events again it comes down to all the cycles however 1995 right like a lot of people will probably shove in my face and say hey look 1995 a soft landing okay maybe maybe these guys can engineer something like that but the probabilities low they're quite low. And in history, if you look at it, it tends to be hard landing. So very interesting. After the FOMC minutes and the meeting previously, we have Macklem. And let's not forget, Bank of Canada was the first to hike rates versus the U.S. They were the first to hike rates. And they're basically the first to pause. 
and they might be the first to cut, maybe, right? But it would the reason you would start that easing cycle is because you do see tremendous pain. And like I said, in when they begin the easing cycle, after being in a pause for some time, they're going to do it slowly, right? Cut. Let's see, assess the situation. Pause a bit there. Cut. Pause in between. And then when the damage comes, we don't know what. What is it? What's a credit? Of, what is going to be the credit event? Is it going to be commercial real estate? Is it going to be um, shadow banking, uh, pension funds in the UK that were about to implode, right? There's so many things you could you could list. Is it going to be that these renewals on the mortgages and whatnot, right? Because you're hearing it also with companies out there, the layoffs starting to continue and continue. So 2024 is going to be very interesting because it might be the year where rate cuts begin and where you're probably going to get euphoria back in the markets, right? Every realtor is going to come to you, be like, all right, rate cuts are happening. This is it, guys. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Right? Stocks, everything. Everything's going to start being having optimism and everything's going to look good temporarily, short term, until the bad news hits, right? It's like having a dose of medicine. Like for example, let's say you're feeling a little bit sick, you take precaution early on, you take some medicine, and okay, you feel better, and oh, the optimism's back in, right? And then you wake up the next day, and then bam, you feel like, you know, um, you know it, that medicine didn't help you, and uh, you're actually worse off. So you're going to need extra dosage. You're going to need consultation from your doctor, maybe a different medicine or whatnot because uh, it just got worse. Third day, you now have a fever. You're now sweating. It's getting worse and worse. And then it gets better afterwards, right? You get prescribed the right medication. You know, uh, you're taking the rest, the bed rest, everything that your doctor tells you to. And then it's just uphill from there, right? Same thing. Same thing like just with the economy. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below, subscribe, hit the like button, bell icon to be notified on the next video. And I'll see you guys around. Cheers. Bye.